there's something about mass incarceration and this this saying about this and uh, with sort of this idea of that um, there's people that they, they're just driven to, to do these things and, and, and so you, you know you have to go to the root cause rather than separate them from all the people they're doing things to and so uh, the whole mass incarceration I was there when mass incarceration happened and people would get shot like in one part of the body so as to not get blood on certain articles of clothing that the person was stealing the, the whole thing of like how starter jackets remember when people said starter jackets owed like kind of black people reparations for all of the violence that happened because of starter jackets like so black people literally black males killing each other beating each other up and killing each other for starter jackets was somehow starter's fault <laughs> I kid you not so people like me I, I had heard a lot of this stuff before now during a portion of the 90s this type of mentality got mocked a lot by especially black comedians but you can't do that anymore that's 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 a no go. That's that's a that's a racism. That's a self racism. You're self hating if you if you may if you if you have observational skills and you are able to make it funny. But the key thing about this is that at some point I remember hearing it was pretty it was Stefan Molyneux and as I remember it went it was like this that you have a square footage of a war zone. Uh, recently I talked about how really there's out of 3,000 counties, about 150 that all the violence happens in, all the murder. And so, if you take that 150 counties, you have then a population of only so many black people in it. And so, you have the, uh, wow, oh, yep, it's down. <laughs> that was fast, all right. And uh, you have only so many people in the war zone of all colors. These are This happens to also be the most diverse counties in America. Um, often these are counties, many of which um, have a wide diversity of, sort of incomes as well because of that. So it's hard then to, you know, like say median income would actually throw a lot of what you're looking for off. So what it did was it, he was like, somebody had done some study on various wars in Africa and getting into like, so what was like the death rate of these, these various nasty civil wars like Rwanda um, and various wars in, uh, in Congolese history uh, recently. And then compared to these 150 counties and these men killing each other. And it was actually found these were quite comparable. That, like, terrifyingly, these were quite comparable. It was as if you were having some horrible civil war, genocidal civil war, in black America during the 90s, or during the 80s through the 90s. It took a decade. They, they took a decade. The span was a decade. The geographic war zone was like where you have these clusters of, of people. And so it really is this thing that um, when Charlemagne the God talks about like, oh, the, the all the people who are mass incarcerated, I mean, he's simply not presenting how insanely violent some parts of the country had become. And, and that nobody had ever seen things like this. This whole idea of people somehow kidding out AK-47s. Uh, I mean, there's even songs over and over about firearms of various sorts. Me and My Girlfriend by Tupac. I mean, what was it? Uh, Spice One, like, endlessly talked about his 9mm. And... Um, and uh, what's it called? And, uh, and I mean, there's all kinds of songs about Uzis and, and AK-47s. And um, so 
what I, uh, this, people are, are ignoring, like, to a great extent, like, how unsafe completely middle-class neighborhoods became. These were people who had never known any kind of violence of any sort like this. They had seen fistfights. There would be somebody who would, they, oh, he pulled a knife on him. No, they beat him with a bat. Like, these were horrible things. Like, this would be a horrible and so crazy that they would just be like, oh, somebody's got to lock him up. He beat people with bat. You know, and, um, but now, I mean, just this idea that it's normal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's normal that, uh, actually, yeah, that's it. That people walk with just posting bail after shooting multiple people. Maybe not killing them, but wounding them. And that, that's normal now. That's completely normal in uh, the United States of America and certain in this, in what now is the war zone. And uh, nobody wants to really deal with, it's like, oh yeah, oh the mass incarceration this, the mass incarceration that. And uh, that's not going to really matter. At some point, you're going to have to deal with, you're not actually safe. You're not safe. And that, for some reason, killers can just do what they want. <laughs> and, I mean, that's, it's just, I mean it, it, that's the horrible truth. And until people are willing to kind of eat that bitterness... Um, there, there's nothing, nothing more that can be said. You, you just have to eat the bitter. Um, that you know, because that there's this horrible thing of like, oh well, yeah, you don't know how we live. Oh, the, we live in unsafety all the time. And it's like, no, 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 no. I lived in the Fillmore, and most of the time of the day, the Fillmore was pretty quiet. You know. There was this one base head and her boyfriend who looked like Snoop Dogg that would walk around and get into talk, try to talk people into things or something. But it, you know, it was really overall pretty quiet. It was after it was at nighttime that uh, the page and uh, was it page? Yeah, page and hate. It, yeah, or was it Webster and hate? I forget which one crosses now after this time. Uh, I think it was Webster, Webster and Hate, and there was a shot and wounded market. <laughs> S&W, shot and wounded market. <clears throat> and there were these places like that, and bad things would happen. And so, uh, I, it, I, overall, it was, it was a quiet re residential neighborhood. People renting, trying to get by, you know, doing what they were doing. There's a school, you know, all that kind of stuff normal neighborhood <laughs> and and so uh, the, the, I just when I hear about it like oh and then the like as if truckloads of cops were, were just pulling people off the street who were wearing parkas I mean, no <laughs> it, was, it wasn't what was happening then there were guys killing people for sneakers and, and sometimes it wasn't even taking them you just had the wrong pair on in the wrong neighborhood. I'm sorry, people like that had to be locked the fuck up. And you w lived in fear of them. You lived in fear of them and their friends, and if they recognized you, so you'd have to make friends with these fucking reprehensible people. And there's things that, to this day, I don't really, there's some people who I'm like, <sighs> hope that guy never reappears in my life again. Ever. <laughs> like, that guy freaked me out then. Then he got locked up for that horrible thing he did. It's, and it freaked me out all the time. And, and your kids shouldn't have to grow up like that. That, it just, that should just simply not be normal. And, uh, and it's becoming now normal. It's becoming the new normal. That, that you, you, and it's just a matter of time when super mega gangster culture starts to have it spread across multiple ethnicities like it did then that happened and and it was awful and it but it, they're gonna have to do something at some point it, it's you it's not that there's a problem and people aren't making a decision that's all it is 
And, uh, and it's going to be bitter. It's going to be bitter strength. Kuli. It's going to be bitter strength. That's going to get communities to, to sort themselves out. And that's it. It's not supposed to feel good. Later.